Welcome back to the Open Rotor Channel. This is part two of install air conditioning into 64 Chevelle. In the last episode, we installed the compressor under the hood, all the brackets and the belt that go with it. We also cut holes in the dashboard to receive the factory location AC bezels. That was a big job. Really glad that's out of the way. In this episode, we're gonna be painting the bezels, preparing all that, going through all the stages, getting them painted, working on uh, the linkage to make the diverter doors work, and seeing if we can get all that functioning, getting them into the dash, getting the dashboard finished, so that way when we get on to the next step, all we gotta do is hook hoses up to that part. So let's do it. Okay, here's the next stage of the game. We're going to paint these in body color of the car. Um, I'm gonna have to rough these up a little bit with some sandpaper. I got some, what is this, uh, 800 grit. 800 grit, I'm gonna sand that just a little bit on the surfaces that matter. I've also got some uh, wax and grease spray to clean them before I paint them. I've got some really high-end primer. Once I prime them, I'm gonna hit them again and uh, just touch them up gently just to get a, a nice little roughness so the paint will stick. And then I've got some exact color. I had this made up at a paint shop. Um, they were able to identify this color and mix it exactly. I got some touch-up paint uh, in a little bottle that I've used it already. It's amazing. And this is a spray can they made for me. Um, so I can spray these parts and other bits down the line. So let's get to work on these. So we're just going to do this ever so lightly. Just take the sheen off so it's not so shiny. I do a crisscross pattern. I think we got it. It's hard to see, but there's less sheen on it. You know, not as shiny. So now we'll do the second one. We're not gonna make you watch that. Okay, there they are, both done. Roughed up. Now we gotta clean them with the wax cleaner. First wash my hands. First, we're just gonna wipe them down, get most of the debris off of them. Definitely look good, nice and flat, not shiny. One side is shiny, you can see that. The other side's flat. This is what we're using. I think what we're gonna do is put it on a microfiber cloth and wipe it down. Now I am not a professional. I have no idea. I've never used this type of uh, paint or cleaner. Or, yeah, I've never used this stuff. So, you know, go out and find other YouTube channels that have better versions of how to use this stuff. This is just what I'm doing. I'm just documenting what I'm doing. So we're back after primer, and now it is time to sand these. Now this is, this I don't know if it can be seen on camera, this stuff is really 
rough. Feels like it's got sand in it. So we really have to get, sand this all down smooth. We got 800 grit and then we're going to paint these in blue. Let's do it. So we're just gonna gently knock that down. And it doesn't take much. It goes right to smooth. So it's actually a really nice product. You can really feel, you can see how much is coming off. You can really feel when you've knocked it down. It definitely does not take much. I've never used these products before, so uh, this is my first time. I don't do a lot of painting. You know, I mean, I might use a rattle can here and there, but I don't do anything really needs, you know, a serious level of, of paint. So I painted the, I primer these three, three coats, 10 minutes apart per the recommendation. Just a light, Dusting each, as you saw. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Just comes out nice and smooth. You can feel where you where you hit it and where you didn't. I now have these sanded down. They look really good. They're nice and smooth. And now we're going to wipe them down uh, first and get the dust, main dust off of them. And then we're going to wipe them down with our degreaser, get them nice and clean. And then we're going to spray them with some color. I did sand the back. These are surfaces that will come in contact. So I didn't want a buildup of primer that's going to interfere with reinstallation. So I did sand down the inside barrel pretty much so removed all the thickness of the primer just getting the majority of this off and then we're going to go to a uh, microfiber rag and our degreaser and get this really cleaned up before we put it back outside and that's always good for it spray with some color Okay, I think we are ready to spray some color. We're all primered, sanded, cleaned, and ready to spray some color on these pieces. Let's get that done. got some color on here and you can really start to see that micro metal flake and pearl it is going to be beautiful it is going to match the rest of the car nicely you're already starting to see it I'm going to go get some clear coat to put over it match the rest of the car but these are really looking nice very happy very happy time for clear coat Wow, that came out amazing. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, nice.
Okay, so I built this piece before, um, and it's got felt lining on it, and that helps seals seals the passageway when the door turns. I don't know if you can see it, but basically that's what it's going to do. It's going to seal around the door, not let air through. Um, and this is a newer one. It's got a little bit better design. It's oblonged instead of round. And we're going to see if we can get get this to to seal up. So we got to make some the felt pieces that go around that. So let's just cut off a piece of felt to start with. I don't think I can mark this. Let's try. Oh yeah, that works pretty good. Kind of an oblong shape. Okay. So you can see how that's fitting over that. So now I have to cut the center out. Nice. It's pretty good. A little long on the ends. We'll be gluing that in. Let's trim that back just a little bit. Yeah, let me see if I can get that. Okay, so you can see down inside there how that fits. I don't have the rod in there, but you can see how the door opens and then the door closes and it seals at each end. All right, let's see about getting the rod in there. And getting that, I got to glue this felt onto the plastic. This stuff here, tacky glue, this is good for fabric and such. Nice, okay. That'll take some time to dry. Okay, slight change of plans. So while working on trying to get this linkage working on the diverter door, I was chatting with the guy who David who let me borrow the templates for the dashboard and he sent me a photograph of some original ducts and linkage that shows how this uh, how this stuff works and the shape of the push rods now there are two different rods there's an L shape this goes down to the door that's basically this one here that's an L shape and then there's a it's hard to see here but it's it, that the rod comes up goes that direction and then up again and it's an like an S shape like this one so that's how the linkage is supposed to be shut, set up but that's not what I've got so that's that door that's that uh, bezel right there and I've got the rod on the wrong door so we're going to rearrange all these bits 
and we're going to see if we can actually get this stuff working. Okay, so right off the bat when you compare these two together, we can see that this rod is supposed to be in this. So we're going to have to switch this rod out or probably change the entire carcass so or the entire ducting. So let's just do that. Let's take this out. That out of the way. And we're going to take this one off. See if we can just simply change. We already got the diverter door in this one, so Once this is on here, it's on pretty good. Okay. So that's going to be with that one over there. Okay, so this is this size side here. And we've got to build the diverter door. Let's put that over there. We still got to build this diverter door, so let's do that real quick. Uh, we're going to get this trimmed up. This felt right here just helps seal the the air. So it can't sneak past. Okay. Okay, well, I think we have to drill this. Let's go ahead and drill this. Such a mess. <laughs> and tight the way we want it okay so this one okay that's that door so we're working this direction like that okay so we want this going in like that. Okay. All right. So which is the best way for this door? I think we did it. Oh, they're the same. Okay. Oh. Oof. It's tight. Definitely seals up nice though. And those doors are just came out so good. I'm really pleased with that. Okay, so I'm just gonna send that through. It's tight, but it's gonna hold it on there real good. So now I don't know whether the door is pointed that way or that way when it's closed. Seems like that may be better. Okay, so ball goes in. This rod goes in. Now the, my rod, obviously, 
need some work there. So this is supposed to be like this. So I've got to bend that into that shape. It's like I may have had it at that shape at one point in the past. This has been bent a few times. Seem like it's very much. Let's see what happens. Looks like that hole needs to be a lot looser than that. Right there, it looks like it's pretty loose on that rod. Hmm, I don't have much space on there. All right. So if this is going to go right there. This has got to go on first for sure. We're just trying to figure this out. Kind of works. I think this needs to come over a little. this part here needs to be straightened out so get rid of this jag all right let's straighten that I think this needs to go away I think I'm going to try and straighten this whole thing out and then kind of start from scratch with my bends. I do need to make another one. I really don't want to have to make two. This was kind of a pain. Okay. Kind of like it. Hmm. We might end up making another one of these. So that goes through there. This is going on there. Kind of works, but seems like if the jag went that way, it would be a little bit better. Just for testing purposes. definitely pulls it better 
if that went up a little or down a little, let's see. It's opening and closing more, so if that's all the way, that's all the way open. That's damn near all the way closed. If we closed it all the way, that's open. That's working right there. Could be a little bit better if I tweaked that end. Yeah, that hole needs to be a little bit bigger. This needs to come down. I'm going to try that. Try oblonging that. So we had had it this way on that last test. Definitely working. Let's try turning that around the direction that it's supposed to go. It's supposed to go that way, so let's try it now that we've oblonged. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be. So that hole just was too long. We need to push this back, I think, a little bit. Or bend that down a little. Oh yeah, so there you go. Yep, it's pretty smooth, actually. And it stays in place, so there you go. Okay, fast forward a few weeks now, and I finally have a finished product. Now, let me catch you up to speed. I was talking with David, the person who sent me the templates to cut out the dashboard, and he told me that the vintage air kits are two and a half inch diameter on the, the whole ducting and I had made original size which are two and three quarter inch so I had to completely remodel and remake the duct so it can fit either if you have factory air conditioning this will fit factory air conditioning and factory ducting if you have vintage air this will fit vintage air and vintage air ducting and the hoses that go behind the dash so I'm going to put links in the description down below. These will be for sale. You will be able to buy one or the other, two and three quarter inch, two and a half. So, now forgive me, but I've forgotten the name of the person, either on Instagram or on YouTube, where I was posting videos, who recommended, because I could not find this knob, of using a pull knob that goes up here on the door. Okay, I don't I don't actually use that style. I use one of these uh, that you can't put a coat hanger over. So, but that was a brilliant idea because I was able to thread the rod. I did a test thread with my uh, tools over here. And I was able to do a test thread and that worked perfectly. I cut, I cut the 
the thing down just a little bit and now it is perfect. So here's my linkage. This is for the passenger side and this is the linkage for the passenger side. So I put a little hat over here. This prevents the rod from slipping out or moving around. And on this end, I put a little rubber and this little rubber I got off of the end of a bungee cord. You know, the bungee cords have the hook at the end and they usually have a little rubber. That's what that came from. And that prevents the rod from slipping off the end just as it's uh, moving around because it's got to have free play. So this is the d device. So that's open. You have fl flow through. The door is open. And then you pull the knob and now the door is closed and the door is closed. So that's what we got. So the rod would be out while you're driving to have that if you wanted to block it off and then that's the normal position the knob is in. That was a lot of work. This whole design has been going on for well over a year trying to come up with this. I've probably printed 20 of these things trying to get it right. Angles where the, the little clips, there's little clips that hold the uh, the bezel on that go, go here. The little clip marks to get the alignment because on the passenger side it actually kicks up and goes up at a slight angle and in. As you can see, it kicks up and goes towards the center of the car. And on the driver's side, it does a different thing. I haven't gotten to that side yet. This is the passenger side, but one done. Time to get back to work, see if we can get the other one. All right, so I went to cut the other knob for the driver's side. And these things are plastic. And you can see the tin foil or the chroming started coming off. So I went over to Auto Obsession and I got a new set and these are actually metal and chromed and man these things look really good and they're basically exactly the same as and it actually as it turns out this one and the passenger side knob that I had were two different ones so the driver or the passenger side one was actually exactly like this one so these are now metal I'm going to cut it down to the right length and uh, yeah, man, nice chrome. These feel good. The uh, chrome will not flake off over time. So let's get that done. Okay, there is the driver's side. Man, this has been a lot of work. And I, you know, I could have just not gone this crazy and not put the diverter doors in there. These things will probably get pulled twice. In their lifetime but they're there they work and uh, now we got to install them in the dash okay so the next plan of attack is to get the vents into the holes now when I cut these I made sure that the bezel fit perfectly in there but since now it's got the ducting on the back it's kind of opened up a little so I'm going to retape this with some blue tape and I'm going to re-sand this just a little bit, trying to keep down those chips right there. And then we're going to see if we can get these things fitted on both sides.
we're looking pretty good. There's a tiny gap down there. I don't think there's much we can do. We'll see if the screws pull it in. Um, I think this top on the screw is going to pull it in. And over here is looking real good. So I think we're going to... I still need to drill this top screw hole. I haven't done that. And I've already drilled the bottom. So we're going to try and screw it in and see how it looks. Okay, there we go. Driver's side installed. Not too bad. There's a little bit of a gap over here at the top. I get over here. But it's not bad. It's not that big of a deal. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. You know, factory vents into a non factory car. Just got to do the passenger side, and then we're on to the next section of this install. And just like that, bingo installed yeah pretty happy with that pretty happy so there we go AC vents in the factory location really happy with the way this turned out I think they look really good certainly in my opinion better than the under dash you know add-ons I mean if you got nothing and you got nothing at all for air conditioning vents it's definitely an option I just wanted to go a little further down the line on looks and style and now it's all functioning diverter doors now we're on to parts under the hood and under the dash so check in the description below I'm going to put a list of the parts that I use to make these diverter doors and the shafts and, and all that stuff all that information and uh, there'll be links in the description below for where you can buy the different size ducting if you've got factory air conditioning or if you've got the uh, vintage air so the large and the small links in the description below consider picking up a t-shirt remember to like and subscribe part three is on the way peace